Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepakshi Khurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you. Indian Prime Minister Modi embarks on Indonesia visit to attend T20 summit. Imran Khan predicts bankruptcy for Pakistan, says debt piling up, no cash to repay loans. And Sri Lanka announces budget aimed at clinching IMF deal, sees recovery by end 2023. And now for all the details, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Monday arrived in Indonesia for a three-day visit to attend the 17th G20 Leaders Summit in Bali. The conference is crucial as India will be handed over the presidency of the G20 for a one-year period during the closing ceremony of the summit. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Monday embarked on a three-day visit to Indonesia's Bali to attend the 17th G20 Group of 20 Countries Leaders' Summit. This G20 summit is particularly special because India will be handed over the presidency of the G20 for a one-year period starting December 1. In a statement, PM Modi said on the sidelines of the G20 summit, he will meet with leaders of several other participating countries and review the progress in India's bilateral relations with them and on key issues such as reviving global growth, food and energy security, environment, health and digital transformation. India's G20 presidency will be grounded in the theme Vasudev Kutumbukam or One Earth, One Family, One Future which underlines the message of equitable growth and a shared future for all. India has a lot to offer to the world to face the modern current challenges. Whatever progress India makes for itself, it always projects it for the entire world. It has been demonstrated in the past and India will do this under its own presidency. The Bali summit slated for November 15 to 16 comprises three working sessions at the leadership level. These include sessions on food and energy security, a session on digital transformation and a session on health. And residents of the Indian capital New Delhi have lamented there has been no improvement in the pollution situation and they are compelled to breathe toxic air. The air quality index in several areas in the city showed a reading above 200 which is considered unhealthy. Residents in India's capital, New Delhi, who are compelled to breathe the city's toxic air, said on Monday that there has been no improvement in the pollution situation in the city. The air quality in several areas in the city showed a reading above 200, posing a risk to the health of residents who were taking in the toxic air. Some commuters were seen wearing masks to lessen the impact of the polluted air they were breathing. Pollution is without a mask can't go and I mean, it's a lot of pain in the face, basically. And as you get out of the way, the face and the face are broken, basically. But there is no doubt about it, still. The pollution of the city is still so bad. I am on the bus stop here. But it's very bad. It's also bad in the eyes. It's also bad in the face. It's also bad in the face. It's also bad in the face. A thick layer of smog envelops Delhi in winter as cold and heavy air traps construction dust, vehicle emissions and the smoke from crop stubble burning in neighbouring states, causing a surge in respiratory illnesses among its 20 million people. All construction and demolition work except for essential projects is banned in Delhi and the national capital region. The curbs were imposed when the air quality was severe in the first week of November. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan's opposition PTI party chief Imran Khan has blamed Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif's government for pursuing disastrous economic policies and said that the country is sinking into debt. In a virtual address to supporters, he pointed out that a fresh election is the only solution. 
Pakistan's former Prime Minister and PTI Party Chief Imran Khan on Sunday accused the ruling coalition government of pursuing disastrous economic policies and said that the country is sinking into debt while the income is falling. Khan virtually addressing his supporters said that PM Shahbaz Sharif led government is not conducting the polls as they are afraid of defeat at the hands of PTI and will not be able to save their corruption and looted money. He also said that the incumbent rulers have never appointed any top officials on merit to ensure that their looted money is saved at all costs. जो नौ महीने में हमने लिया था, तो कर्जे बढ़ते जा रहे हैं, उनके पर सूद भी देना है, और जो आमदनी जिससे कर्जे वापस करने हैं, वो कम होती जा रही है, तो मुल्क का तो दिवालिया निकलना है। Khan's PTI party on Thursday resumed its long march towards Islamabad from Punjab province a week after he was shot in his leg in an assassination attempt. The march is part of Khan's efforts to galvanize support against his removal from office in a no-confidence motion in April. The political tension comes as Pakistan is currently in the midst of an unprecedented economic crisis as it grapples with mounting inflation, sky-high foreign debt and declining foreign currency reserves. The turmoil has been exacerbated by recent flooding that the government estimates caused economic losses worth 30 billion US dollars. Moving on, residents across Gilgit, Baltistan have condemned the arson attack on a girls' school in the Diyama district last week, which they have blamed on the terrorist. In a similar incident in 2018, 12 girls' schools were bombed and burnt down in Diyama, where Taliban-linked militants opposed to girls' education are active. Locals across Gilgit, Baltistan have expressed shock and demanded action over the recent arson attack on a girls' school in Diyama district which they have blamed on terrorists. Several protests have been held since the past week when the incident happened and rights groups have raised concern over repeated attempts by extremist elements to derail development in the illegally occupied region. Locals have urged the government to ensure right to education and end to patronization of extremists. The local authorities have said restoration work on the burnt school is underway. This incident is not the first one. In 2018, 12 girls' schools were bombed and burned down in Diyamar, where Taliban-linked militants opposed to girls' education are active. Pakistani Taliban and allied Islamist militants regard girls' education as anti-Islam. And in news from Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka pledged to boost tax revenues and reduce the budget deficit on Monday as President Ranil Vikramasinghe presented the annual budget in the parliament aimed at winning the bailout funds from the International Monetary Fund. Vikramasinghe said the crisis at Sri Lankan economy can turn around by end of 2023 if the new policies are followed. Sri Lanka's President Ranil Vikramasinghe on Monday pledged to boost tax revenues and reduce the budget deficit as he announced the annual budget aiming to wean the economy away from populist policies to win bailout funds from the International Monetary Fund. The crisis hit Sri Lankan economy can turn around by end of 2023 if the budget policies are followed, Vikramasinghe said. IMF recommendations have only been looked at to stabilize the economy, he told the parliament. Vikramasinghe said the government plans to reduce debt to less than 100% of GDP over the medium term and achieving economic growth of 7%. Public revenue is expected to rise to 15% of GDP by 2025 from 8% currently. The government targets revenue of 9.27 billion US dollars in 2023, up 63% from the current year, while limiting the increase in spending to 31% year on year. The $2.9 billion IMF bailout package agreed earlier this year is key to pulling the nation out of its worst economic crisis in decades. It would also help Colombo secure other lines of funding 
as it nearly ran out of foreign exchange reserves this year, resulting in a sovereign debt default. Sri Lanka currently experiencing consumer price growth of 66 percent will aim for mid-single-digit inflation in the medium term, Vikramasinghe said. While the Organization of Islamic Countries opened its mission in the Afghan capital, Kabul, on Sunday with an aim to coordinate and deliver humanitarian aid to the war-torn country. No country has so far recognized the Taliban's regime in Afghanistan and multiple sanctions have hampered banking, business and development. The Organization of Islamic Countries, OIC, opened its new office of its mission in Afghan capital Kabul on Sunday with the ceremony attended by senior Taliban officials, representatives of OIC, UN and other international organizations. Taliban's Minister of Foreign Affairs, Amir Khan Muttaki, said the OIC office would be effective in political cooperation in addition to economic and humanitarian support. Tariq Ali Bakhit, OIC Secretary General, Special Envoy for Afghanistan, said that the fully activated mission is poised to assume an effective role in the delivery of humanitarian and development aid of the OIC. The Taliban seized control of Afghanistan last August and since then the country is facing a looming economic meltdown and humanitarian catastrophe. While UN and the international community have raised concern over persistent abuse of human rights, including those of women, girls and minorities. No country has so far recognized the Taliban's regime in Afghanistan over these issues. The country's assets have remained frozen due to sanctions that have severely hampered banking, businesses and development, leading to greater insecurity, poverty and isolation. And an event was organized in India's western Pune city this past weekend where animal lovers celebrated their love for their four-legged friends. Around 2,500 dogs and 300 cats along with their owners participated in different activities held during the event including a fashion show and a cat show. Take a look. A pet gala event was organized in India's western Pune city on Sunday where animal lovers came together to celebrate the love for their four-legged friends by participating in different activities, including a fashion show and a cat show. Around 2,500 dogs and 300 cats, along with their owners, took part in the event, according to the organizers. Wearing colorful collars, different breeds of dogs, including Cocker Spaniel, Beagle and Labrador, were among others who flaunted their catwalk skills as they walked the ramp with their owners. Uh, we have dogs and cats. Uh, we also have adoption uh, happening here at a big level. Uh, for dogs, it's a get-together where people will come around. There will be activities across the day. Okay, There is an agility zone where you can touch the, uh, know the intelligence and obedience of your dog. It's also great to uh, you know, ha have a bond with your dog. Then we have activities happening on the stage. We are making sure that you know the sound levels and the decibel levels are maintained so that you know our dogs are uh, patient and they uh, they don't get uh, um, a problem with the uh, sound. And also we are having a championship cat show. Visitors, which included children, attended the pet show and spent quality time with the dogs and the cats. As per the organizers, this type of event happened for the first time in the city. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude, the top stories once again. Indian Prime Minister Modi embarks on Indonesia visit to attend T20 summit. Imran Khan predicts bankruptcy for Pakistan, says debt piling up, no cash to repay loans. And Sri Lanka announces budget aimed at clinching IMF deal, sees recovery by end 2023. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.